producer CJ here and I'm just going to break down how I came up with my Midwest type beat that you guys have listened to. Um, so I'm going to just dive right into it. So usually if I'm producing a song, um, I will start with the bass line because I consider that the foundation. So I'm just going to go ahead and mute that for you guys so you can hear So this is the introduction, and then the bass line just loops and loops. All right, so that's the bass line. So. After I came up with the bass line, um, I started thinking of counter melodies and um, what other instruments I would like to incorporate. And I'm a pianist, so I usually choose keyboard or piano sound. And um, that's when I came up with the chord progressions that I came up with um, to go along with the bass. So yeah, the the piano part kind of serves as um, a counter melody to the bass line. And then we have a tons of other percussion instruments here. We got shakers, triangle part, congas, bongos. Um, and later on in the track, we have a tambourine that comes in, as you can see over here. But all of the percussion parts that I add um, just simply serve as sugar on top. Um, and just to add and bring out all these other sounds that you don't you won't get from uh tonal instruments like a piano or a bass so i'm just going to go ahead and play the track from the fifth bar so you can hear the difference <laughs> I meant to start on the fifth, but it started on 13. But either way, you can see where um, the shaker is incorporated. Um, actually, I do want to pay it back at the fifth because we have two different types of percussion loops that I added on here. And I typically wouldn't use um, sample based loops because I'm like a musician myself. So I prefer acoustic instruments over anything. They just give me the best sound in my opinion, but in this case, I didn't really have um, percussion instruments at my disposal. So I just decided to use the loops that they provide here in Soundtrack. I'm gonna go ahead and mute just the shakers so you can hear exactly what they add to the track. So you got this one shaker up here. That's all that's doing. And then you have congas in here and you have a triangle part in here so um, as you can see it just adds a little bit of sugar on top um, one other element that comes in here at like just before the ninth bar is this little punch reverse which is just a synth melody that I added just to break up some of the repetitiveness repetitiveness is not a terrible thing because it gives a listener a sense of home and that is really what gets a track stuck in someone's head is just because they can just keep hearing that maybe they just keep hearing the chorus replay 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 in their head it's just the repetitive part about it but you don't want it to become redundant so that's why I added this little synth part right here it's kind of behind the scenes but it kind of breaks up some of that repetitiveness and um I just play it so you can hear it. Comes in right here. So yeah, it's just a little 
just a little melodic line. I might just throw that up for you guys. Yeah, so just a little something, something to break up all of this looping that you can see is going on here. Um, another a good practice is just to reintroduce musical ideas. Uh, like I said before, the repetitiveness, it's a there's a good and bad to it. If you do it right, it won't become annoying, and it'll give the song just a, a great foundation in general. Um, I just want to skip to the end here. All right, so this is where the drum parts switch up. And this is my favorite part of the piece because one thing that a typical song would usually want and switch up the drum beat, they might switch it up once and then it'll come back to the same previous drum beat. But I, I, I really can't choose when it comes to drums because I'm also a percussionist, so I, I just had to have it all. Oh, I think I had like three different drum beats in here, three different percussion parts. But I just want to take a listen to this. These last couple of bars we got on the song. And we no longer have piano, so we have an alto sax on here. Let me introduce the tambourine. that same synth come in at the end. So yeah, you get the idea. It's it's kind of like before I had the punch reverse come in as a new musical idea, then I took that same concept of recycling musical ideas to give it a sense of home by adding the punch at the end with all of these new musical ideas that I added. Without it, you might have lost um, exactly what I was going for for the song. Like It might have sounded like two completely different songs had I not added that same element before at the end. Um forgot to mention that the sax solo that we ha have here at the end, I did not create this. You always have to give credit when doing I did not create this alto sax part. Um, Mr. Galloway, some of you may have had him as a teacher, but Mr. Galloway uh, put that on there for me, and I was amazed by that. I can't really break that down for you because I didn't put that in there myself, but that was a great element that I thought um, it was great to add just because I brought the piano part out, so you kind of need another counter melody to go with that bass line. And, you know, we continue this bass line out through a whole song because that that's the foundation, so you kind of need that bass line in there um so yeah that's pretty much how i came up with it uh i think one of the things that make this song stand out is the fact that the bass line is not only the foundation but it's also the melody which isn't super common in songs nowadays usually the melody will be given to a piano or a guitar um bass would usually just serve as the bass line like you know the foundation not technically the melody but here we have it as being kind of its own little melody and then I kind of build everything else around it another aspect of this song that makes it unique is the fusion of all the different genres as you can see it has latin breaks a salsa a mambo um and then you come towards the end and it's we have drum beats that kind of sound rockish they kind of sound hip-hop and that's really how you come up with this unique, unheard of sound that anyone from any culture could really vibe to and bob their heads to because it's not just one genre, but it's like the fusion of all of them. So this is how I came up with my Midwest type B. And the sound quality of all of these tracks is not the best, but I plan on making a separate video to show you how I would go about um, mixing everything. This is just production wise. So yeah, this is all.